I'm Michael Bott. And I'm Rupert Soskin. Welcome to another Prehistory Flash, bringing you snippets of information on some of the amazing prehistoric discoveries that often slip by unnoticed amidst all the noisier daily news. Yes, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons to help boost the channel on YouTube. And if you've got a moment, please do take a look at our Patreon crowdfunding page. We've got a great community there who help fund us making all our content. Links below and up in the uh, corner there. However, today we're looking at a stunning set of artefacts found during excavations at the Montelirio Tolos passage grave in Valencina de la Concepcion in southwest Spain. Excavations were completed back in 2010, but reports were only published in 2015 and 2019. The site has been dated to around 4,800 years old and stands within a necropolis incorporating a number of other burials. Archaeologists unearthed an extraordinary collection of arrowheads and a beautifully preserved dagger, all of which are made from rock crystal. Now, it's worth noting that rock crystal and quartz items have appeared in a number of other burials in the regions of Western Andalusia and Extremadura, but the vast majority of sites have contained just one or two items. A couple of sites did contain a dozen or so arrowheads and microblades, but none of these other burials have given up anything as spectacular as here at the Tholos of Montelirio. And spectacular is the operative word, isn't it? It's also worth noting that the excavations revealed a really unusual set of remains. The Tholos itself is an enormous megalithic structure made mainly from huge slabs of slate. The 39-metre corridor extends into a corbelled roofed construction containing a main burial chamber. Another short passage leads from the main chamber into a second, smaller burial chamber. The remains of at least 25 individuals have been excavated. 20 were found in the larger main chamber, two in the smaller chamber and a further three in the corridor. Analysis has revealed that at least 15 of the individuals were women, although from the arrangement and positioning of the bodies, it seems likely that they may all have been females. This is probably a good time to point out that all the media coverage of this site in the excavations have descended into total fabrication and in some cases utter nonsense. Ah, uh, yes, from tales of goddess cults to mass suicide. <laughs> Many of the media articles have reported that the women probably all drank a poisonous liquid in some grand ritual to accompany their chieftain into the afterlife. They pretty much all report that everyone died from mercury poisoning with speculation that perhaps these were priestesses of some kind or some sort who painted their skin with the toxic substance. Yes, the somewhat less dramatic truth is that just seven of the 25 individuals showed traces of mercury poisoning, which almost certainly came from the cinnabar that has been more widely associated with similar sites. Now, cinnabar produces a red pigment, which could easily have been used for skin colouring and adornment. Now, these people just wouldn't have known that they were slowly poisoning themselves. Oh, and that chieftain they were supposedly accompanying into the afterlife well, that chieftain was in a completely separate burial about 200 metres away in the necropolis. Yeah, well, uh, sorry to be such downers on the party. <laughs> but here, the walls of the site were also coated with cinnabar, but there is not one scrap of evidence to support any of these outlandish claims. There are also depictions from otherwise reputable sources of a massive chamber filled with the corpses of people who have been involved in their lavish ritual. The simple fact is that even the larger of the two chambers is far too small for any kind of dancing around. These people were simply laid to rest. <laughs> yeah, however, all that said, back to the facts... The oh, must we? Also found, <laughs> yeah, we must. The archaeologists also found a large amount of what are thought to be either shrouds or items of clothing with the bodies. Now, obviously, any of the binding fibres and textiles have long since disintegrated, but whatever these garments were, they were made with tens of thousands of perforated and amber beads. Tens of thousands of perforated amber beads. Let's just meditate on uh, that for a not, not all amber beads. There were t yeah. tens of thousands of perforated beads, but some of them yes. are amber and... Oh, it's just extraordinary, isn't it? Tens yeah. of thousands? Good grief. 
The burial also contained the broken remains of what was a ceramic figurine of some sort, a number of small pieces of gold blades and ivory, and unusually for a burial like this, they found a crystal core, which possibly is the very same tool used to make all the weapons. It is truly a fabulous discovery, which requires none of the media fairy tales. However, that said, I, I can't wait for the uh, the novels to come out, somebody to write a novel, you know, which will uh -huh. uh, hang all these wonderful details together somehow. Anyway, but it, that's it. obviously a few of these claims are possible, but it's far from certain that all these individuals even died at the same time. And it's particularly fanciful to suggest that they all died at the same time as the chief in the tomb 200 metres away. All we can say for certain is that 25 people were buried in two chambers. And that they were buried with arguably the most beautiful set of crystal weapons anyone could possibly need in the afterlife. What more could you want? <laughs> and on that note... We will say bye-bye for now. Hope you enjoyed that. Until the next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. See you soon, folks. Bye.